Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out E through F. Because F. <laughs> Let's just get started right away, shall we? You know the drill from the previous two videos I did. So, FIFA Soccer and FIFA 14 and FIFA 15 and FIFA 13 are all the same game, except the later games have updated rosters. So, basically find the cheapest one and pick it and you'll be fine. But it's a decent little football game. You've got... Lots of different modes to go through, a full career mode and all that. It doesn't deliver anything past like the 2011 FIFAs, but um, it's still a fairly good football game nonetheless. If you're looking for a football game on the go, this is probably your best shot. And there is a free demo, so if you want to go try it out, you can do that. That's basically all I've got to say about it. I'm, I'm not one to talk about... I'm not one to talk about football games, because I don't really know that much about football games. But as a football... As a... Not so much a casual soccer fan, but as much as someone who knows about soccer or football or whatever. It's still pretty good, so yeah. Just pick the cheapest one and away you go. Earth Defense Force 2017 Portable. Probably one of my favorite games on the Vita. It's a huge, like, it's got a huge Japanese city that gets absolutely run over by gigantic ants, spiders, and alien spaceships, and robots, and a gigantic Godzilla ripoff, and... God, all, there's a hundred different weapons to find. You beat enemies and you collect things like armor and weapon pickups that give you new weapons. And there's online multiplayer for four people. And it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it to death. Also, I've noted that Earth Defense Force 2 isn't here. That's probably down the bottom somewhere. But that game is also fantastic as well. They run terribly and they look like a PlayStation 2 game. But at the same time, they're a ton of fun and great to just turn off your brain and blast things with. Equilibrium. A weird free-to-play... What's the word? Uh, I was going to say Schindler's List for a moment there. I said it a few hours ago. Uh, skin a box game. But yeah. You just ha you just get different uh, um, plants and animals and you put them all in the ecosystem and try to give it a balance. It's just... Eh. Free-to-play Vita games. Doesn't really stand a chance of being good, honestly. Element 4L. Or Elemental, or, you know, why did they name it that? Why couldn't they have just called it Elemental? But anyway. It's a two-dimensional platformer, which is really, really smooth. The idea is, it feels a lot more like a rhythm puzzle game more than anything else, because you have to go through the levels, swapping between the four different kinds of things you can be. Like a, uh, you can be like lava, you can be an ice block, you can be a couple of other things, and you have to go through all these levels as smoothly as possible to keep up your speed, and just, it is actually really satisfying to do. It's kind of, it's a really neat game. Just, you have to just keep the speed up by playing the levels correct. I know it's kind of hard to describe, but if you've ever played Trials, and you know what it's like trying to keep the rhythm up by slowing down and speeding up at the right times, imagine that, but instead of using like speed, accelerator, brake, and stuff like that, you use different elemental modes to keep going on a, on a track. It's actually a neat little platformer. And Shannon Gavin's a PSP game, if I remember correctly. So what's it doing here? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if this is a PSP game or not. But yeah, we'll just, we'll just leave that one alone. It looks like a shovelware game anyway. Entwined. This game is kind of strange. You use both sticks to control two different characters, which are the bird and the dragon in a circular sphere like this, and you gotta try and collect all the different... You gotta try and collect all the different things to power up your meter, and use that to get to the end of the level, at which point you become a bird that just literally has to fly through rings. It's... It feels like it's trying to tell a message, but it really isn't, and the gameplay itself just gets kind of annoying after a while, especially since it can be kind of imprecise at times. It's a really weird thing. It's it's a very artsy-fartsy game. And yes, I say artsy-fartsy with the full knowledge of the fact that I'm saying artsy-fartsy. But it's just... It's strange, honestly. It's not really worth the time. I mean, I think they're trying to tell a story through it. But it just... The message is lost unless you go watch some hipster's 30-minute takedown of what the game means. So, yeah. Not really worth the time, honestly. Escape Plan. This came out originally with the Vita. I'm surprised it's still up for some reason. Like, why am I surprised? But anyway, you use the rear and the front touchpad to navigate two characters around a bunch of different levels and a bunch of different puzzles. And it's 
very entertaining because they die very violently and there's a bunch of comedy in the background and stuff like that and it's got a bunch of different add-ons and such so there's plenty of stuff to go do in it and it's a and it's got a good demo as well so yeah go play the demo it's well worth playing at least the demo so you know have fun with that wait who did it say this was by from the producers behind fat princess huh didn't know that but yeah well worth the time to go look at escape vector this is the get by the guys who originally made um what's the word blast and bunnies and the idea is, it's a lot like Pac-Man. You have to try and draw over all of the paths in the level while avoiding all the enemies. And it is... You've got a lot of different abilities to use and lots of different levels to go through. And it's a uh, really... It's an engaging puzzle game. And I do quite like it. It's just quite hard. So, you know, avoid if you're not a fan of hard games. Still. Pretty damn good. Even Meteor Hunter... It's a two-dimensional platformer where you play a mouse, obviously looking for meteors, and there's a bunch of different collectibles to find and puzzles to do, but the problem is that it doesn't do any of these things particularly amazingly. It just, you have to collect as many fragments, as many, yeah, it's just, really, it just doesn't do anything special, honestly. It works, it's a perfectly fine um, platformer, it's just not that impressive, honestly, really. That's basically all I've got to say about that one. Euphoria HD. It's a remake of the PC lightweight strategy game where you have a bunch of planets and these planets can each spawn different types of workers. And you have to send either fighters, workers or just other things to try and take over other planets in the solar system like so. They've all got their own stats and you have to try and take out as many of the enemy planets as possible while keeping yours alive. It is basically a lightweight strategy game and I do quite like it. It's got a lovely sense of melancholy to it and unfortunately there's no such thing like a custom mode where you can make like random maps or something so you've only got the challenges and the story mode to play through but as a lightweight strategy game this is the example of how you get this thing to work on a console you make it nice and simple but still enjoyable while still having a bit of depth to it because yeah as you can see there's still a bunch of stuff you need to go and have done but it's still a really nice little strategy game and it looks lovely it sounds lovely and everything and you can control it really easily and it's just lovely watching the little fights go down a little bunch of flowery spaceships with lasers Still, if you're looking for a good strategy game and you're on the Vita for some reason, this is where you come to get it. Formula 1 2011 is one of the games I never bought. I'm surprised it's still here, but I actually have no information on this game whatsoever. So I'm sorry about that if you're looking for that. Fantasy Hero Unsigned Legacy. This is basically Diablo. It's the same concept as Damascus Gear. Where you... Where you go around beating up enemies, collecting their loot leveling up and making your characters better with said loot. So that is basically it. There's a bunch of different character classes, which oddly enough, you get loot for all the classes, but you can't have all the classes on one save slot. So you can't like trade items between them, which is a little odd. But yeah, it's also rather light, lightweight and makes fun of itself a lot. It's got a very simple upgrade tree, as you can see there. That's basically it. But it's still pretty fun nonetheless. And... If you're looking for a Diablo-like game, this is, a, this is a good choice as well. And you've got all sorts of different things here as well. All sorts of DLC you can get if you want to extend a bit further. All the Farming Simulator games are exactly the bloody same. Farming, farming Simulator, the normal one, the 14 and the 16. They all do exactly the same thing. You control a bunch of different farm tools to do things like collect crops, sow, sow more crops... Do things like cut down trees and take them to... Uh, and just try and make as much money as possible. That's basically it. There's no end goal. It's literally just make your wallet as big as possible. The only difference between Farming Simulator, the regular, and 14 was they added cows. Between 14 and 16, they added trees you could chop down. And it went from... Not Fez. And it went from... Um, like, five, t 10, 5 bucks to 35 bucks. So, yeah, kind of a ripoff. Fez. 
It's a 2D platformer that you can rotate around four directions, like a square. Kind of hard to explain, but once you see like five seconds of the game, it just clicks instantly. It's got a lot of really clever puzzles, the art is fantastic, and it's just, yeah, it's a really good puzzle platformer. So, yeah, I like it a lot. Of course, Phil Fisher was behind it, but this was made by a team who's completely, like, unassociated with him now, so it's actually alright, but, yeah. Field Runners 2. It's a tower defense game originally ported from, um, mobile phones and stuff like that. So, the idea is, you've got a big, wide open space, and sometimes you've got, like, levels that have, like, a bunch of different routes they go down, but you can still choose, like, how to route them and stuff like that, and you can put units and stuff anywhere to... It makes things interesting. It's an interesting vanilla tower defense game. And there's a... It's got a lot of different stuff for it. It's a little bit hard to get, like, higher level stuff. Because you have to go back and repeat old levels to get more money. But, yeah. It's still... It's still pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. I already talked about all the FIFA soccer ones. Final Fantasy X and X, X, X2. The remakes of the... Original PlayStation 2 RPGs. X, X and X2. There's a weird bunch of X2 screenshots at the front there. But yeah. They look wonderful. They It's a really well done set of remakes. And they're actually still pretty fun to play even these days. So yeah. would I If you want to look into it. Not much of a better place to start. And it's yeah. It's a really good RPG. That and hopefully they'll be remastering FFX12. Or FF12. So I'm actually really looking forward to the FF12 remaster because I don't want to go playing it on my computer on a PS2 emulator. Flame Over. It's a firefighting roguelike. You have twin sticks, you have water pressure, and you have extinguishers. And they, and you use it to set out fires and keep electric stuff from seeing on fire again. You try and save people. And it's a roguelike, so you have to try and earn as much money as possible before you die. And you... um. And you use that to buy upgrades and stuff. I didn't get along with this game at all. And I was the only person that didn't, apparently. Everyone else loved Flame Over. I just couldn't get along with it. I found the level design to be a bit of a pain in the ass. I found the shooting controls to be really annoying. And it's just... Yeah. I just... I didn't like it very much at all. But everybody else loved it. I don't know why. But, oh well, right? See that red meter that goes around the outside? Yeah, that's a health meter. Like, it's a little strange. But anyway... Flame Over really isn't that bad. It's just, like, I didn't like it at all, honestly. So, we'll move along to Floating Cloud God Saves the Pilgrims in HD. It's a two-dimensional shooter that you play by floating around and defending these guys down the bottom left here. These are your pilgrims, and you got to try and get them to the end of the level before the devils get down to them and kill them. And it's a really interesting little minimalistic game, and it's... 55 meg and it's three bucks fifty. It's pretty fun, but it gets really really hard later on So, you know if you're looking for something hard, there you go It's it's a pretty good game. Just not fantastic Flow is It's weird. I, I Honestly don't get the point of this game. I played this game for an hour originally and the idea is that you're a that you're some sort of sea creature and you have to dive up and down through different levels of the biosphere Collect uh, eight different enemies and then use them to become bigger and stronger But I never figured out how to actually do that, which is a little strange. It's just I honestly don't understand this game at all. So Yeah, it's one of those games that that tends to be more focused on the art than the actual game It's a little disappointing honestly and there's an expansion for the Vita which costs like two bucks I really don't understand that, but anyway. Flower. From the same people that bought you flow. It's a game where you fly around a big 3D world, like collecting, um, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Blooming flowers and going through and trying to finish the level while having a bit of a melancholy time because the game looks and sounds fantastic. It's an audio visual treat like nothing I've seen before. And it's just, it's adorable. And it's just lovely. You sit back, relax, and 
just let it go. It's... I know, it sounds weird. Like, I... I gave Flow a bit of shit for not really feeling like a game, but Flower really is a game. You do have to... There is some gameplay and precision in yourself into flowers and trying to get them all done and all that. And it's it's fairly simple, but it's, it's all right. And it, it looks and sounds lovely. So if you want an audio-visual tree more than anything else, you should pick up Flower. Fly Hunter Origins... I think this is the last game Ripstone released on the Vita up to this point. But yeah, you're an alien, you've landed on Earth with a ton of different creatures and all that, and it's just a... It's a really generic platformer. It doesn't look that good, it doesn't run that good. It's just relatively boring, and it's really got nothing to it, and you've also got these, like, weird flying to the screen sections here that are just boring as, boring as well. You can actually pass through some of the walls if you try hard enough. It's just, yeah, not a very entertaining game, guys. I don't know why they picked this. I don't know why they picked to publish that one. It wasn't that great. Flying Hamster HD. It's a two-dimensional shooter. It's actually a lot more bullet hell. But um, the idea is you have to get through the game as far as you can. There's a lot of different enemies and stuff to play with. It's very cartoony and very kitty and very enjoyable, actually. And you you only start out with one life, but once you die, you get more lives depending on how well you did. And there's lots of different weapons and enemies and stuff. And it's actually a pretty entertaining game. And for four bucks for 90 meg, it's pretty good. And you've even got a demo, so go play that demo. It's well worth it. Foosball 2012 is a foosball game. The AI in this game is a bloody dick, and I absolutely hate it. But the actual, like, single player content, well, the multiplayer content, I should say, is actually pretty good. It looks great. It is foosball. You can pass and, you know, you have to move all you guys individually up and down and you have to try and defend the ball. And it is actually a pretty damn good foosball game. Again, the AI is just a dick, but it is still a pretty good foosball game. If you're looking for a foosball game, there you go. It runs pretty well. It sounds all right. Not much else to say about it, really. Four defense games are just tower defense games from eight floor, so they're not really worth talking about. Foul Play. This is a 2D beat-em-up. The idea is that you are an actor in a play, in a stage play, and you have to go beat up a bunch of different big guys. And you can play with up to two people. And the more hits you get, the more of a crowd of media you get up there, which gives you more points. And there's a bunch of moves you unlock as you go along. And there's a bunch of different story levels to go for about, uh, I'm going to guess around six to seven hours. And... It's a stage play, so it's got all sorts of interesting stuff. Like, you've got the crowd down there who'll go wild as you do better. Uh, you guys will get up and run off the stage after you beat them, if you get far enough away from them. And it's a lovely theme, and the game's beat-em-up uh, sensibilities are still pretty good as well. So it's a it's a great beat-em-up. Well worth checking out. Quite lovely. Freedom Wars. It's Sony's attempt at a hunting game. And the idea is that you are trapped inside what's called a panopticon, which is basically a prison. You have to earn the right to be free, and you have to fight these gigantic ass monsters with this weird chain thing which you can use to pull off armor and um, pull yourself around the world. You've also got guns and swords to attack with. You have to save things like hostages, and there aren't that many monster types, unfortunately, and there aren't that many mission types either, and it is a bit repetitive. And the game's upgrade system is very reminiscent of a mobile game where they make you wait like a few hours real time to make sure that you can't blast through everything, which is really disappointing, honestly. It's still an alright game and there's probably still play people playing it online to this day. It's just... There are better hunting games on the Vita by far, trust me on this, but... They released it at $14.99 as the original price. Like, they didn't... They, that isn't a discount. That's the actual original price of it. And to be fair, it is worth that. It's upgrading, it's combat and all that. It's enough to keep you going for a few hours. It's worth the $14.99 they're asking for it. The DLC though, not that much. <laughs> Look at all that DLC they charge you a dollar for. Frobisher says is um, Sony's take on WarioWare. There's a bunch of different mini games that take a bunch of... Smile at the ladies, don't smile at the patches. Okay, um, but yeah, there's a bunch of weird random mini games, and you have to play through as many as you can in a row, and there's a bunch of different games you can play and all that. It's, and you do have to buy a bunch of the other games, but 
It's still pretty neat nonetheless, and it's a nice little distraction for a couple of hours. Frozen Synapse Prime is an adaptation of the game Frozen Synapse for PC to consoles, and it works brilliantly. You've got a ton of different levels, all the controls work just fine, they use a combination of both analog sticks to have a look around and give you guys orders. And the games take place at the same time. So the idea is that you set out your moves by predicting what the enemy is going to do and then planning your moves around what they're planning, you're planning they're going to do. So you both move at the same time. You go try and get through all the levels without getting your guys killed and killing their guys. And it's a very interesting concept. And the Vita version adapts this very well. And it also uses the original Frozen Synapse soundtrack, which is one of the best fucking soundtracks I've ever heard in my life. It is an absolutely brilliant strategy game, and it works fantastically on the Vita. It's got a long campaign, you can play online with other people, and there's a... There's no AI skirmish mode, unfortunately, which is a little disappointing, but still. Well worth the time to pick up. Fruit Ninja! It costs five bucks. Fermins! It's a 2D puzzle game, because of course it is, right? And the idea is, you have to lead them through the levels by launching them through, by after placing a bunch of different obstacles and stuff like that, and you have to try and collect as many candies as possible, and it's a fairly generic puzzle game, but at the same time, it's alright, it works, it just, it does what, it does the, what you would expect it to, and it's alright, that's fine, it's fun. It's not that impressive. And there is, like, a couple of DLC things to buy. Futuridium EP Deluxe. It's a 3D space shooter that... I was about to say, it's a 3D space shooter that takes place in space. Hello, D Department of Redundancy Department. But yeah, it's a 3D space shooter where you have to focus on destroying these frigates. And how you do you destroy these frigates? Find their power cores and destroy them and then get the hell out of Dodge. The problem with this game is that it's... So fast that sometimes it can be really hard to aim at shit. It looks and sounds lovely and it actually performs pretty well, but it's just the controls are just really, really hard to get used to. And even after a couple of hours of play, I still couldn't get used to them. So, I mean, it is a still a fairly good game nonetheless, but I mean, unless you're really good at figuring out controls of, of really quickly moving 3D space shooters, you probably want to either give that one a miss or see if you can look, look it up a bit more. Anyway, that was E through F. Not that much to it this time, thank god. I'll be back next time with G through H. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.